So my name's Greg. I'm part of the reputation and brand management team here at Fanshawe. I'm actually a student engagement specialist. So maybe you guys have seen me out visiting your school or in videos online. I'm always popping up somewhere, but it's not about me today. It's about you guys having the opportunity to learn about a program of interest and don't be alarmed. I know it says event planning and you maybe were thinking you're looking for special events planning. Um, we just changed the name of the program. It's the same program, so don't get stressed there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to the program coordinator here in a minute and introduce you guys. But at the end of today, we're going to have a little bit of a Q&A. So we're going to cover off the questions that you guys post into that chat box. I'll probably throw a couple zingers in there myself. Um, but let's get started. So I'm going to turn it over. This is Emma Garrity. She is the program coordinator. She is the person that you guys are going to be best friends with one day. All right. You ready, Emma? Yeah, I sure am. Thank you for the intro, right. Greg. It's and all uh, yours. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, thank you, Greg, for explaining the name change of the program because I thought that might throw a curveball at some of you. Um, if you are starting the program in January, you're still going to be in special event planning, but the ministry have just uh, agreed to a program name change. Um, and so we're now just event planning. It's still the same program, just a different name. Um, so thank you again for joining me. I'm Emma Garrity. I'm the program coordinator. Um, I'm going to try and keep my presentation fairly brief um, and give you an overview of the program, stuff that you wouldn't necessarily get to see if you looked at our website, talk to you a little bit about how it's working and talk to you about how we're responding to the challenges of uh, the pandemic. Um, and then, of course, I'm hoping there'll be plenty of time for you to ask any questions that you, you have in your mind. Um, before I get started, I'm going to apologise in advance. If uh, I have a new puppy, he's four months old and he found his voice today and he's been barking a lot. So I apologise in advance if you hear my puppy barking uh, as we get through this presentation. OK, so I think um, we've only we don't have a, a huge group um, with us this evening. But if you if you have got your mics on, then if you can just meet your mute your mics up at the top, just to, it cuts out any background noise for us. Um, and that I will put my email address right at the end of this presentation. So if you think of anything and you don't want to ask it in this format, you'll be able to email me um, after we finish our session, okay? So this is me. Um, I'm the program coordinator. So I look after the academic side of the program. So I often get questions about things like fees and uh, sorry, there's a timing thing on there. I get questions about fees and all sorts of things. But generally, I look after the academic side of the program. But if you have questions that I can't answer, I'll know how to find the answer. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm not from here originally. I um, was raised in the UK. My parents are both from Dublin in Ireland and I've lived in uh, five countries and counting now and ended up in Canada because I met a boy and, and uh, moved here with him. He's from London, Ontario. So I've been at Fanshawe since uh, 2013 and took over the running of the event planning program a few years ago. I got my start in the industry a long time ago, probably more than 30 years ago. And one of the first events that I work, worked on was the launch of the Air Miles scheme. Now you probably are aware of Air Miles, most people have Air Miles, but back then when we launched it, we called it a voucher scheme. And I worked for a big public relations company in the UK and Air Miles was one of my clients. And I wrote the first ever press release when we, we launched that, um, that scheme, which has been one of the most successful loyalty programs and the precursor to many loyalty programs that came after it. I worked on a lot of cosmetics. Estee Lauder were my clients for quite a while. Um, and that's how I got my start in the industry. Back then, event planning was uh, born out of public relations. And so I started there. I later went into management consultancy and worked with a number of hotel chains um, as clients in a consultancy capacity. And then fast forward uh, many years, decided to flip and become a full time educator. And uh, I now am a full time educator who just happens to have a background in event planning. And that's how I found myself uh, working at Fanshawe and running this program, which I love doing. 
So that's a little bit about me. There's my email address on the screen there. You'll also find it on our program uh, website as well if you think of anything you want to ask me. So just a little bit about our program, um, special event planning or event planning, same program, is a two-year Ontario College diploma. So it is officially two years, but most students get done faster than that, depending on their own personal progression through the courses in the program. Um, when I look back at some of the careers that our graduates have gone on to have, I think what, one of the things that strikes me is that the, this program prepares you for a number of different careers, not necessarily event planning. I think I have students who come into the program thinking they're going to be wedding planners. And during the course of the program, they find that they're really drawn to the business aspect of it. Or I've had students who've decided they love the project management that comes with planning an event. And they've gone on to do their project management certification at the end of the program. But um, one of the, the newest jobs that I'm seeing my graduates starting to apply for now, and I say new because we didn't see these jobs before this year, and I've asterisked it here on the screen, a virtual event coordinator. If you are thinking about the types of jobs that you might like to do, then do an Indeed search, look for jobs as a virtual event coordinator, and you will see, as I've seen, that a pattern is emerging, that we're seeing more companies now looking for people to to manage their virtual events and I'm going to talk about that a little bit um, at the end of our presentation when we talk about um, job prospects a little bit for graduates of our program. So depending on what which aspect of the program appeals to you we've got students who really like the catering and the food service side of the program who've gone to work at hotels as catering, catering managers or event coordinators. Um, of course, we've got some students who've had prior experience who landed event manager jo jobs right off the bat. That's unusual, but if they've already got experience under their belt, that's possible. Um, a number of students, particularly I've noticed the ones in the Greater Toronto area, have focused more on the convention and meeting planning side of the business. Um, we've got students who are interested in trade shows. We've got students who specifically wanted to work in not-for-profit and therefore have moved into fundraising roles and fund, fundraising coordinator roles. And of course, we've got students who really wanted to plan weddings and uh, we've got graduates who have gone on to launch their own wedding planning business. I also have a graduate um, from the cohort last year who decided to open a bakery, which was random, but she decided she really wanted to have her own business. And, uh, and that was wonderful because we, we talk about business, owning your own business and entrepreneurship a fair bit in the program. This photo here on the screen is a bunch of our event planning stu students last year who hosted a brunch at Windermere Man Manor in aid of the Boys and Girls Club of Canada. And I'm going to be talking about that event in a little while. So lots of jobs, a wide ranging industry, lots of opportunities. Now, if you've looked at our website, um, I wanted just to emphasize this because um, Fanshawe has a number of different campus um, locations. This program is offered exclusively um, at our London downtown campus, and it's at 130 Dundas Street. Um, obviously, this semester and next semester, we are not in campus, we are not downtown. We are working exclusively virtually at the moment, which you know, isn't for everybody and it wouldn't be my choice. I like uh, the, the buzz of being in a downtown campus and seeing students face to face, but so far so good, it's going pretty well. And the feedback I've had from students is that, you know, online learning really isn't as bad as they thought it might be. You may also have seen, if you looked at our website, the other program location, it's a little bit confusing. Um, we have launched a fully online version of uh, event planning and it's starting in January. So that is um, something that I will talk about more in, in a moment. But there are two programs running. One is permanently fully online and the other one is temporarily online for January um, and hopefully we'll be back in campus soon um, for those folks who really want to be studying in the classroom. Um, we love being in our downtown location. 
I love working downtown. I used to work at our larger campus in Oxford Street. Um, but I love being downtown because we are steps away from restaurants and bars. There's lots of things to do. The Covent Garden Market is right opposite us for lunch. Um, I found a number of my students would all get together impromptu and go out for lunch together um, in the middle of classes. And so it's just a really nice location. And when everybody is on campus, it has a really nice vibe to it. As event planning students, one of, one of the key advantages, I think, is that we host a lot of events downtown and we can walk to check out some local event venues. And so we've had students host events literally a few doors down at the London Music Hall. We've had students volunteering at Budweiser Gardens. The London Convention Centre is just, you know, a stone's throw away from us. So, you know, for event planning students who want to make connections with downtown local organisations and businesses, then being downtown is, is really wonderful. So I've put this in there because we have a lot of um, jargon in, at Fanshawe that I think sometimes confuses a little bit. So when we talk about the program being a two year program, what it means is really it is a four semester program. And we sometimes refer to semesters as levels just to confuse you even further. So just to give you a heads up, if you're planning on starting this program in the fall semester, which is September start, then you would complete your first year, September, then your second semester would be in January and you would be off in the summer semester. Um, and then in the second year, again, you would do a fall semester for your third semester and then a January semester it would be your final semester. The programme completion is a little bit different if you choose to start the programme in January, whether you're starting this coming January 2021 or you're thinking about starting the following January. January students um, typically um, have the same graduation date as September start students. The only difference being really is that if you started the programme in January, you'd be completing your level two semester over the summer. And that means you don't get a break. But it, it also means you finish the programme a little bit earlier because you don't have a break in the middle of a semester. So I wanted just to point that out because I know um, sometimes I've had questions about that on our website. The completion date is exactly the same because um, students who begin in September and students who start in January meet up together um, for their second year the following year. I don't know um, how many of you are thinking about applying for the fully online programme, but I just want to talk about that a little bit because I anticipated some questions. So uh, we decided to launch the fully online version of our program for a number of reasons, really. Firstly, because we do have a number of mature students who take our program. Maybe it's a second career. Maybe the women have had a career break to raise families or they've been working full time and they couldn't do um, a full time day program that was on campus. So we launched this program fully online. And the idea is um, that you would start just like any other student would. And if you're taking a full load, then your completion date would be exactly the same as a regular face-to-face -face student. Um, I'm hoping that some people will have will see the flexibility of studying online. It is possible to take the program on a part-time basis. Um, you'll obviously not have the same completion date as you would if you took the full course load every semester. Um, but the, the idea of the online program is that it is designed to be fully asynchronous, or there's a, a piece of educational jargon for you. In other words, um, we will often host a one hour virtual class every week to give you a chance to check in with your instructors. Um, however, if you were working or you couldn't make that class, then we will always record them and they're posted for you to watch later. So asynchronous means there's no one particular time that you have to be online and interacting with your instructor and your peers if that's not possible for you. That you'll be able to, to check the um, course website and complete the tasks and, and assignments um, in your own time, evenings, early mornings. Um, so ultimately a, a slightly more flexible approach than um, would have been our traditional um, program. So that's the online program. And like I said, it is starting in January, 2021. 
So I'm just going to give you a really quick overviews of the semesters. I'm not going to go into too much detail about all these courses. Um, firstly, because that would be boring. And secondly, because I'm in the process of moving some things around, um, getting ready for planning for next September. So I'm in that process right now. But typically, um, you may, you may be aware that there are certain courses that the ministry requires us to have in our diploma programs. And so like most diploma programs, the first semester of event planning is skills building. So we have a lot of courses in there, as I'm sure you've seen on our website, that are helping you to build the skills you need to be successful in college. Um, we do have some event planning courses in there, of course, mixed in with things like um, technology, which is uh, us uh, polishing our skills on basic software. There's some math in there. Um, and there are some certifications that are required in the industry, like smart serve and safe food handling. There's also a standard writ course, which is your reason and writing. And so the first semester tends to be fairly standard and uh, very common amongst a lot of um, diploma programs. In second semester, we get into more um, specific event planning um, courses. And the one that I've highlighted here for you in red is a practicum course. It is not a permanent placement. Um, but students are offered opportunities to volunteer all kinds of events throughout the program and your practicum asks you to build up a number of hours working at events and gaining experience and then you submit those hours eventually in a portfolio or a digital website that you create with wonderful photographs of you working at all sorts of various events and really um, being hands-on in the industry. Now, practicum opportunities have been slimmer this year, of course, because of COVID, there were so many events in this region that were cancelled. But I'm starting to see that pick up now. We're getting a number of uh, organisations contacting me um, just in this last week, particularly asking for virtual event volunteers. And so the industry has flipped and uh, they're recognising that events are going to go on regardless and that now students are able to volunteer virtually. So there are some exciting things happening in the industry. Students tell me um, that the practicum has been really helpful for them because when you graduate, um, you're in a competitive job marketplace and that students who've got a portfolio to show their employers, um, you know, a website that shows them working at all these different events and reflecting on the things that they've learned. It really gives them uh, a leg up when it comes to getting that first job in the industry and uh, setting yourself apart from other applicants who perhaps don't have that kind of experience. So that's what practicum is. It's not a particular semester where you're out full time working. Um, that would be a co-op and it's something that I'm thinking of introducing into the program. It may or may not be in place for next September. But so practicum is a little bit different. They are a series of field placements where you get to work at some fun events and uh, build up your confidence and gain some experience. The other thing I want to explain really quickly because I get questions about this is gen ed. You might hear that term, you might see that term when you look at courses um, on our website. The ministry um, asks us to have three courses in our program that are for general education purposes and we call them gen eds. And that means you get to pick a course and it could be all sorts of things like something about the film industry it could be something about psychology it could be something about sustainability and the environmental practices so you get to choose um, some gen ed courses in the program for your own personal interest so that's semester two um, just to give you some ideas of some of the volunteering that our students have done you know like I said that event portfolio was really important for helping you land that job when you graduate from the program and our students have said that one of the key things they've loved about the volunteering that they've done is the networking opportunities they've had within the industry so here are some of our students volunteering at various uh, events over the last year um, these are some of the events that our students have also volunteered at um, 
all sorts of things, everything from the wine and food show to the London Air Show. We work with local charities. Um, we work with a number of charities for doing all sorts of volunteer work. We worked at Christmas fairs, we worked at markets, we worked at concerts and, and festivals. So you name it, we've done it. And the more you do, the better your resume will look at the end of the programme. Uh, we work quite closely with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society of Canada and uh, we continue to do so. In fact, so they have a, a charity event every year that sh that's thousands of participants and it's called Light the Night Walk. I don't know if you've ever participated in one of these, but um, they really are an incredible visual event in aid of this, this charity. And of course, we weren't able to do that this year because of COVID restrictions. So we are actually working with this charity right now and our students are coming up with some virtual event ideas um, that we can do to raise money for them. So we continue to try and innovate and move as, as the industry has changed. For those of you who are thinking wedding planning might be your thing, we also work every year at the London Luxury Bridal Show. Our students volunteer at this event. In fact, two of our students helped organise um, the 2020 event. And again, it gives you a great opportunity to make some really important industry connections. Then we get into our second year and as we get into the second year of our program that's when we start getting into all event specific courses industry specific you do a beers wines and spirits course and you gain a certification in beer and you learn all about wines and you get a little wine pin and you get a w set approved um, certificate that says you know about wine and spirits um, so these are globally industry recognized certifications that you'll get in your third, in your second year, sorry, in your third semester. We also start hosting your final events and you start fundraising for your final capstone event that you will execute in your final semester. Um, these are some examples of some industry certifications. I'm always adding and changing and thinking about different certifications we can get through the program. And one of the ones that I'm recommending this year is a virtual um, event certification. So here are some really quick um, examples of some student-led events. I've talked quite a lot, I always do. I need to speed this up a little bit. So here are some events that our students have executed over the last year or so. Um, this was a wonderful one with a puppy yoga event, which raised money for Paws United. It was so wonderful. These puppies were only six weeks old and they were running around the event. The students raised a lot of money for Paws United and not only that, all of the puppies were adopted and there's a lot of learning coming with an event like this because you have to learn about insurance and liability waivers you know they say never work with children and animals well this brave group of uh, young women did just that they worked with animals and children on this event here's um oh, let me go back i think i skipped one here's a, a breakfast uh, brunch event at windermere manor which is a wonderful venue where they had workshops on painting and flower arranging and raised some um, money for um, the breakfast club of canada that was a lovely sunday afternoon actually this one raised five thousand dollars almost for the canadian mental health association and this was a concert it was uh, held at the london music hall which is steps away from our downtown campus and it was a really amazing night they had a bunch of vendors selling all sorts of, of wares and they had custom t-shirts made um, that the name of the event was metal health which was a great play on words this was another concert also at the london music hall this was for ways mental health and um, this one raised almost three thousand dollars which they were very proud here presenting to their charity that they worked very closely with so lots of students choose to use um, run runners which is part of the london music hall it's a wonderful venue um, and these are some guys who decided they wanted to do a basketball fundraiser they booked out a community center they raised some money for kids sport and they had a really competitive evening actually playing basketball. We had a lot of fun at this event. And here is just a few other pictures and photos of myself and students at various events. This one was an Italian themed luncheon with classical music playing. It was a lovely afternoon. Um, students volunteer at all sorts of fanshawe led events as well. And this uh, 
a photo here at the bottom, this group of students were very brave. They held a, a mystic and holistic psychic fair. So uh, lots of performance. They had a hypnotist up on stage and they had a ton of guest speakers and it really was an incredible evening as well. So lots of different, very different kinds of events um, that our students have run. So I wanted to talk about this very, very quickly, anticipating that some of you might be asking me this question because it's got to be on your minds. You know, we're in a pandemic. The hospitality industry have been hugely affected. Are there still going to be jobs for event planners when this is all over? Well, interesting. So I've been doing a little bit of research on this just to educate myself. And um, one of the key things, you know, particularly if you're looking at the business side of events, if you're interested in meetings and conferences, I mean, the conference industry is huge. We're talking about $1 trillion in direct spending, right? Um, so yes, of course, that industry was hit terribly during the pandemic, but they've pivoted. At the end of the day, businesses still need to hold conferences. We're having a webinar right now that we wouldn't normally be doing in a virtual environment. We would have been doing this on campus face to face. But I think this has forced a lot of organizations, particularly smaller charities, to recognize the benefit of a virtual event. They're a lot cheaper. Everybody can attend. You can watch after the fact. There are so many benefits of it. And so one of the things that I'm seeing in my research of the industry is that virtual events emerged as the top type, type of event this year. Of course they did. But it's going to carry on. It's going to continue because, you know, web traffic there's a lot of people doing online video conferencing. That's not going to change. A number of organizations have announced that their staff are going to be permanently working from home for the foreseeable future, including Microsoft. Um, some very large organizations have realized the benefits of teleworking and, of course, virtual conferencing. So that's only going to grow. Um, and one of the things that um, the PCMA survey found that event organizers really believe that although when we get back to being able to have face to face events, of course, people are going to have face to face events, but we think we're going to see an uptick in events running virtually alongside them, just like this open house. I think Fanshawe will realize that we can do a virtual open house every year as well as maybe a face to face open house. Even weddings, I don't think that part of the industry, the virtual wedding industry, is here to stay. And so I was on a call recently with all of the event planners who run programs at all Ontario colleges. We set up a community of practice to share ideas and learning with each other. And we're all saying that we are embedding virtual events into our program. We're all looking at ways to embed improve the learning that we have in our programs on virtual events because they're not going anywhere and like i said to you if you start doing um, google search or indeed search look at jobs look at virtual event planners virtual conference assistants those jobs are just starting um, to be hired for and i think by the time you graduate this program there are actually going to be more opportunities than there were before so that's my take on it anyway so that's me, finished my spiel. I talk for longer than I thought, I always do. Um, so on this last slide is my email address. Please feel free to email me questions, but um, I'm gonna hand over to Greg now. I can't see the questions that you have been um, busily perhaps typing in. So I'm gonna hand over now and stop talking and so let's are. see if let's see if you've got any questions for me. They answered quite a bit of what they were asking. So, um, First things first, I always learn so much about these programs when I sit in and I think there's some really cool tidbits I learned today. So when I'm going out into the world, I'm going to be a lot more informed the level that you guys are working with organizations to help people. And, and you know, you had me at puppies, so I'm coming into <laughs> the puppies. Um, but yeah. also, I, I appreciate that you took the time to address the future of the industry. And certainly one of the biggest questions we're getting is always COVID, 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 right? And, um, yeah, so that's I mean, and it should be. That. It's an important question. You know, you want to be making sure that there are jobs for you at the other end of a training program. But, you know, as devastating as this year has been, I see that there are more opportunities rather than less coming down the pipe for event oh, planners. Absolutely. I've been to a lot of them and I'll tell you what, I feel sorry because I think virtual event planning is going to be a tough gig. So 
It's a very tough game. A lot more pieces to the puzzle to figure out for sure. Yeah, so, for sure. I think one of the quick questions that we had, and, and you touched on this, but uh, so Samia, and sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Samia, I, I apologize. Um, but certainly they were asking about the online sort of approach to training, and, and certainly they wanted to know, will we ever be in class? So um, as much as we talk about this temporary online, it's, it's a necessary evil right now because we're looking out for you guys uh, and your safety first and foremost, that's important. So, so we would love, believe us, we would love to have you in class again. None of us, I think we've all kind of got tired of this work from home thing, but unfortunately for the short term, um, we got to look out for your health and safety. So, but that doesn't mean it's forever. Um, it's all pending how this pandemic progresses and when we can get to that safe area, uh, we would transition back to an in-class format. But- I can't wait. Like, like Emma wait. mentioned, <laughs> they've been working hard to, to take this new model of online learning into the future and provide opportunity for many folks that are looking to, to retrain in a different model. So that's the best of both worlds is you are gonna have a fully online approach to your training, but you're also gonna have the traditional in-class if, if that's what you prefer. Um, yeah. So I, hopefully that answers your question and Emma really covered it off pretty good earlier in the process. Yeah, and if um, I can just address that really, really quickly, sure. Greg, um, you know, my preference is to be face to face with students, right? I think I think all of your instructors would say the same. But the reason we've launched the online program is that in future, we'd like students to have more flexibility. And so that wouldn't necessarily be a, a real clear line between a face to face student and an online student. Maybe there are certain courses that you want to come to campus for when we get back to campus. But there are other courses that you'd be happy to take online. And that's what we're hoping the program will be ultimately flexible in the near future right but we can't wait to get back to campus and as soon as we're able to and for those students who want to be back on campus we can't wait to join you me as well <laughs> and we have another question coming from michelle and again you did cover most of this in your presentation but i promised i'd recap these just in case um, so she was talking about the experiential component and the field trips and the practicums and um, specifically what kind of opportunities there will be in the future uh, and then she was also asking more or less if you were an online student are those field trips and practicums mandatory no and that's one that I have been asked a few times so you know we're kind of in a flux stage we're kind of feeling things out but field trips are embedded into certain courses they are not mandatory so if you are a fully online student it might be that you can join a field trip via virtual reality 360 video maybe there's a similar venue in your hometown that you can go and visit instead but we're certainly looking at ways to make it interactive for you but doable from wherever location you're studying from so no they're not mandatory excellent so that was the gist of the questions that came from the audience, but I'm gonna come in with a few questions because these are other things that get asked and I'm, I'm not sure if uh, we have some adult mature students with us today or not, but a common question, and I'm sure you get this all the time, what happens if I don't necessarily have experience in terms of the academics, but I've spent a lot of time working with a family member or you know, connecting with uh, somebody in the industry and have provided a lot of support and actually invested a lot of time is there a way to get credit for that uh, time that i've worked out whether that was privately or with an actual uh, corporation so if there's a particular course that you see um, in the program and you say wow i've done a lot of that then that would be when you'd contact me and we can look at whether there's an opportunity to plow that course which is prior learning recognition and achievement and so of course sometimes we have mature learners who have done a lot of something in particular let's say it was uh, computing right um, and I'm really familiar with all of Microsoft Office and then maybe that we would look at whether we can get um, you recognized for that previous achievement and that would be a conversation that you would have with me um, often what, what I find that students do, they start out thinking, oh, I really want to, don't want to do that because I've done a lot of that. But then when they get into the course, they actually find the value in staying in the course. But yeah, that would be where you and I would have a conversation and we would look at how your prior learning and your previous experience 
um, might exempt you from some areas of the program. Sure. And another common kind of twist on that question is I've taken courses at another institution, so I might be coming from Conestoga and I've completed maybe half the first semester, uh, or maybe I kind of, um, you know, took another program at Fanshawe. Is there the opportunity to get that credit for any of the courses I've completed elsewhere? Yeah, we have a lot of people who come to us already with degrees or they've done another diploma or they're coming back to learning after a break. And so again, that's typically a conversation with me. If it's another course at Fanshawe, often it will, it will automatically um, be given credit to you on your transcript. Things like writ, which is your reason and writing courses, are often common across multiple programs. And so then you'd be given credit for those if it was a Fanshawe course. If you were coming from another college, then you would send me a description of the courses that you've taken, you'd send me your transcript, and then I would have a look at those courses and decide if they were fam um, similar enough to what we do to be able to grant you credit. And I do know all of the program coordinators at all of the Ontario colleges, so often we'll email each other backwards and forwards and, and decide you know, between us if we think a course is similar enough. But certainly we have a number of students who get credits in various courses because of um, things they've taken previously. Excellent. And the last kind of one, I mean, you expressed your love for the downtown campus and your experience at the main campus. Uh, do students have to travel between campuses quite often or are they just situated downtown? That's a good question, actually, because I've noticed sometimes that open house is a little bit of confusion. So one of the key things is um, that I love about our small campus is it's a really small campus. It's one building and we are either usually in classes between the second floor and the fifth floor. Right. Um, actually not even the third floor so three floors right and that's where all of your classes will typically be and so you're not traveling backwards and forwards to other campuses for different courses um, in the future we also have a campus opposite us literally like you can throw a stone at it um, and in the future we may have some courses across the street literally um, but other than that we're always in the downtown campus the only way you might be traveling backwards and forwards is if you are living in residence then what I often find is students who live in residence, they're gonna get a bus downtown, right? I think I'm not a bus taker anymore, but I think it takes about 20 minutes on the bus from residence to downtown campus. But what I tend to find is in the first couple of weeks of the program, students figure out, hey, we're all at residence together. Why don't we car share? There'll be at least one with a car. And often that's kind of how they work it out between us. So other than traveling to our downtown campus from residence, there shouldn't be any need for students traveling backwards and forwards. And so you really get to know all the faces at our downtown campus. You get very familiar with everybody because you'll see us a lot. Yeah, very tight knit community. Yeah, it uh, is. So for the folks out there, we have three buses that will pretty much drop you off door to door. So it is about 15 minutes during, you know, normal traffic time, 20 minutes if it was kind of lunch hour or, or work commute time. So, um, I think that's about it. So that was great. Lots of information. Um, certainly we have lots of opportunity for you folks and anybody that might be viewing this in the future online. Uh, we're always here to help out. So right there on the screen, you see Emma's uh, email address. Certainly take that down, screen grab the, the page if you can. Um, she's always helpful, trust me. A lot of these program coordinators are always there to kind of lend you guys some support. So, so definitely reach out to them. But there's a whole other host of folks at the campus that can help. And the easiest way to find us, head right out to fanshawec.ca slash connect. Uh, that will set you guys up with all kinds of opportunities. It keeps you abreast of any events and things that will be happening in the future. And it's a good way to get in contact with an advisor if you were looking for that credit transfer. It's a good way to get in contact with me if you wanted to have more of a what is Fanshawe sort of conversation. So definitely check us out. Um, but otherwise, thanks for coming out today, folks, and thank you, Emma, for putting on a great presentation. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. And just a very final note, 
unlike some other programs, you know, our program is quite small. And one of the things that I love about it is that I will get to know you all very, very well. You'll have me as an instructor at least once, if not for two or three different courses in the program. And so there's definitely in a relationship building um, that I love about this program. So don't be afraid to email me if you think of something afterwards that you wish you'd asked. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Good night, everyone. Good night.